talagang bracket na, no? So, we have here a bracket composed of two pieces of plate that is 12 millimeters thick. And this is 100 kilonewtons acting on the bracket. So, if this is two pieces of brackets or two pieces of plate, so it looks something like this. Okay? In the three dimension, it looks like, like this. So, as not to complicate our solution, let us divide the analysis of the two brackets because this is anyway symmetrical. Okay? So, this 100 will be divided into two between the two brackets, this and this. So, they will take 50 kilonewtons each of them. Something like this. So, tag 50 kilonewtons sila. So, I will just analyze one plate or one bracket instead of two. You get it? So, it would be more simple. Okay? Now, take note that the centroid of the of the uh, 6 volts is this. So, if this is 400, this is 200, 200. If this is 300, this is 150, 150. So, the eccentricity of this is 200 plus 150. So, that would be 350. So, the eccentricity is 350. Okay? So, let me make the drawing a little bit smaller. So, this is the E, 350, 150, 200, 200. Okay? Now, take note that the centroid is here. The force is eccentric to the centroid. So, this will try to re rotate our plate in the clockwise direction, right? So, as a result, the bolts will be reacting to produce a counterclockwise reaction to this P. You get it? Okay, and the centroid of reaction or the center of rotation is this one. Okay, now, so this eccentric load we learn from our uh, strength of materials is the same as a centroidal load due to P at the centroid plus the moment on the plate due to P times E. Our P times E is 50 times 350. 50 is in kilonewtons and E 350 is in millimeters. So this is kilonewton millimeters. I will not translate this to newton millimeter anymore. Huh? So that our answer will be in kilonewtons. Okay? So this is our moment. Now considering this figure or the plate acted upon by the P at the centroid, due to this P, P, our 6 volts will react and the reaction will be P over 6. And the P over 6 is going to be 50 kilonewtons over 6 that is divided by 2 simplifying 25 over 3. Or that is 8.3333. But let me just uh, leave it in terms of exact value, the fraction of 25 over 3 kilonewtons. Now, going to this uh, plate acted upon by this moment, this is clockwise, so the reaction will be counterclockwise. So each and every bolt, bolt 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, will react to produce a counterclockwise moment about G. So for bolt 1, that is FM1, FM3, FM6, FM4. So those are the force in corner rivets. Take note, I am expressing my answer in force. Now, for these middle bolts, 2 and 5, this is FM2. While this is FM5, take note they all in the counterclockwise direction about G. Now, as you can see here, bolt 1, 3, 6, and 4 are the farthest bolts. So, the stress maximum exists there. So, if I'm going to impose, superimpose the force due to centroidal load P, so this will be our P over 6. So getting the resultant of F due to force P, 
which is P over 6, and stress due to moment, using vector graphical method, the resultant is from tail of first vector to head of the last vector. So, for bolt 1, this is the resultant. For bolt 3, this is the resultant. For bolt 6, from tail to head, from tail to head. So, as you can see, the bolt 1 and bolt 3, the right part bolts, yung nasa right, are more critical because this is longer than this one. So, our bolt 1 and bolt 3 will have the same resultant stress. So, this would be the maximum. For bolt 2, this is the resultant. For bolt 3, tail to head, it will just be this one. You get it? Now, while... This also is vertical from tail to head. This is longer than this most likely. But take note that FM1 is greater than FM2 because C1 is greater than C2. So therefore, the resultant here will be bigger than the resultant here. Because this and this, stress due to centroidal load are just, or force due to centroidal load are just the same. So the more critical here is still... FM1. You get it? Okay. Now, and of course, FM3. So, let us solve FM. Our FM force due to moment is MC over JG. Okay? And our JG is summation of C squared. Right? So, taking the summation of C squared, take note that C2, which is the same as C5, is 150. And this is our C1. This is 200. So our C1 therefore is going to be the square root of C2 which is 150 squared plus 200 squared. So computing that, that is C1 is 250. So computing our J global summation of C squared. So this is going to be summation of C of corner bolts, that is 250 squared times, there are 4 of them, so times 4. C squared of middle bolts, there are 2 of them, the C is to 150, so plus 150 squared times 2, right? 2 because there are 2 of them, and the C is 150, this is 150. So, therefore, computing that, our J global is 295,000. We are ready to substitute here. The maximum FM is FM1. So, this is MC1 over J global. Your M is PE, which is 17,500 kilonewton millimeter. And our C is equal to... 250, that is the C max, C1, this one. So, computing that over J global, 295,000, so that is 14.83 kilonewtons. So, what is being asked here is find the minimum allowable and shearing, shearing stress and bearing stress of the bolt connection. So, here, we are to consider both shearing and bearing so it is more convenient to express the answer in terms of force not in terms of stress so let us consider shear so let us isolate this figure this is it so this is our fm1 this is our p over 6 which is 25 over 3 so the resultant uh, force is this one f1 so, our F1 can be solved easily using vector instead of using the conventional or the normal method being presented in books. I will use the vector approach because anyway, this is, uh, we are provided with calculators that can solve vectors, mode complex. Then let us use that. So, in here, let me solve first theta 1 which is needed in the computation of vectors because we need the direction. So, this is theta 1 from the vertical to incline is theta 1. So, therefore, from horizontal to normal to the incline, that is also theta 1, right? Okay, because this is 90. 
So, this is 90. So, this is 90 minus theta 1. Considering the vertical and horizontal, if this is 90 minus theta 1, so this must be theta 1. If from horizontal to inclined is theta 1, from the vertical to normal is also theta 1. When I say normal, normal or perpendicular to the inclined. So, theta 1 can be solved from this triangle. This is the G, 150, that is your C2. C1 is 250. So, therefore, theta 1 is the arc tangent of 150 over 200, right? So, pwede ring arc sine of 150 over 250. Okay, but let me take arc tangent 150 over 200. And this is 36.87 degrees. You get it? Okay, so this is 36.87 degrees. So, using mode complex to solve F1, that is simply P over 6 plus Fm1 using vector, no? So, the vector representation of P over 6 and vector representation of Fm1. When I say vector, you need to indicate the direction, okay? So... Your F1 is going to be vector P over 6, which is 25 over 3. The direction of this is towards upward, that is 90 degrees. So, angle 90. Just study your calculator, so how to use the mode complex. So, plus FM1, our FM1 is 14.83, the direction angle from here, this is the 0 degree and this is theta 1. Theta 1 is 36.87. So, press equals then convert this into R angle theta form. So, you will get here 20.92 angle 55.45. So, this is your F1. Okay? We have a training in calculator tricks and techniques. I really encourage you to enroll in that course you will learn how to use your calculator comprehensively, all the uses of your calculators, specifically the Canon, most advisable calculator for use in civil engineering. Okay, I would presume that all of you are taking civil engineering because you are attending this steel mastery course. Now, considering now the shearing stress, in order for it to be safe, our actual stress must be less than the allowable stress, right? So, our actual stress is the force over the area of the bolt, okay? So, that is 20.92 20 kilonewton or in newtons, 2920 newtons over the area of the bolt. Take note that the bolt it was mentioned to be, for this problem, 16, hindi 20, ha? Huh? So, Pi over 4, 16 squared. So, this is going to be 104.05. The actual stress is 104.05. It must be less than the allowable. So, the minimum allowable is 104.05. So, our uh, uh, capacity of the bolt must be greater than or equal to this actual. Now, considering bearing... Bearing stress is our F1 over bearing area. The bearing area between the bolt, this is the bolt. For example, this is the bolt and this is the plate. So the bearing area is this half portion and the pores is this one. Okay. So the, the area perpendicular to this force is the area projection of this portion. So, that is going to be equal to what? The diameter multiplied by the thickness of the plate. You get it? So, therefore, that is area bearing, that is dt. D is 16 and the thickness of the plate was given to be 12 mm. Okay, so this is going to be 108.95. So the minimum required stress is 108.95 megapascal.